strangest of times on my hill watching while the cities rise from the collapse that we left when the sun beat it down to the valley Night Dreams Talk Radio, After Dark, wants to give a big shout out to all the truckers that listen to our show. If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network, from our compound to you worldwide with your host gary anderson and we are back and we're talking with our guests about the well the moon and is it a satellite is it a spaceship is it real you know one thing i i do say that if there is trees and if there's other things on the moon like smoke coming out of smokestacks tells me it has atmosphere Absolutely. So we've been lied to yeah. there, right, right off the bat, you know. But again, you know, when we got to the moon, if there was an atmosphere there, we were lied to, right there. I mean, it, we've been constant there. If there was atmosphere there, then that tells yeah, me it. Uh, the way I found it is that uh, the atmosphere up there is not like ours. It is uh, it's air. And I don't exactly know what I would say the uh, oxygen content is, but it is according to about 16 to maybe 20,000 feet of altitude on Earth. That is the equivalent of the atmosphere on the moon. So that's pretty high. And some people would say, oh, we can't live there. Well, look in the Himalayas. There are people that live at 16,000 feet all their life. Oh yeah, I mean they born and born and die at that at you know height. But again, though, how about trees and stuff? I mean, it, it tells me there has to be more oxygen in that if you have trees and and stuff like that growing. Yeah, uh, that's on Mars. Uh, I got okay. pictures okay. of trees on Mars, but, but the pyramids on the Moon. You don't build pyramids in spacesuits. No, I don't see how you could. No, <laughs> that would get a little hot. And um, now the thing is also that uh, uh, in 1973, if you go and Google Project Red Sun, you will find in 1973 they traveled to Mars and they built a small base there for observation mostly. They found animals, vegetation, trees, and they found small people. And some of these people are only 10 to 12 inches tall. That sounds kind of ridiculous, don't it? Well, I'll let you in on something that I found. About three years ago, there was a fossil found inside a rock in Antarctica. And this was written up in scientific magazines, and then uh, it's still floating around. I got a picture on my website, or one on my website about that. That skeleton that was found in that rock 
in uh, Antarctica was 11 inches long. That is about 32, 31 centimeters long. And then on my documentary that I sent you, we see this little man standing, leaning up against a rock on Mars. And it's a small rock. The rock is about probably maybe a foot and a half tall. And this little guy is shorter than the rock. Did you see that one? Yeah, I do. And you know what? I do believe it. Have you ever heard of Mary Joyce? She runs a UFO Bigfoot reporting center out of Cashiers, North Carolina. And uh, no. she's been on my show several times. She used to be a reporter for various you know, publications, an editor, actually. And the, her website is very extensive, you know, for like UFO sightings and all this type of stuff. She has said that back in North Carolina, back a few years ago, they were building a community college. And while they're escalate, you know, clearing out the land, they found skeletons of little people that were about approximately 12, 13 inches, 14 inches in length. Really? Yeah. That, that, James, you remember that, don't you? Yeah, and and that's about what she said. Some of them, I think she said, was a little bit smaller, even. But yeah, that that's she's reported out a few times in that area of of where she's talking about there. So I I believe if they if we found on our own planet a skeleton, you know, in in North Carolina, less alone Antarctica, it tells me that you know again. There could be li- they could be alien forms of life because again we don't know what it's like on another solar system another planet the what sizes that these you know humanoids might develop they, I mean they could be twelve inches or they could be thirteen feet I mean we don't know yeah yeah well it appears that there were taller ones up there too and there probably still is but I think. Uh, more of them probably are living underground up there because, uh, you know, we know what Mars look like. You know, they look like, they always call it a red planet. No, it's not red. It's, um, I have NASA pictures of blue sky up there. You don't get that unless you have air. So uh, they're lying to us again. Their lips are moving. And uh, it's more, uh, it had more atmosphere. They also tell us that there's no water up there. Well, I got pictures of of a, a riverbed with water, uh, just huge puddles all the way through that riverbed. I think that's on the uh, on the video documentary also. And uh, it gets really interesting once you start getting some of these pictures that is being sent back to NASA, and they they are private individuals that is capturing the stream, and they publish them. So this is before NASA get their hands on it. Uh, But also, we know that there was a great disaster on uh, Mars because uh, it was a nuclear disaster. Uh, Much of the atmosphere probably either burned up or were pulled off. Um, They had a higher percentage of oxygen. Uh, How do we know that? Well, there's there's probes of spaceships that is from the things... uh, you know, in rock and so on. And they found extremely high amount of xenon-135 gas. That tells us that there was a nuclear discharge. And uh, because xenon-135 is an unnatural gas, it can only exist. It is produced by a nuclear explosion. So they, we proved that in Chernobyl and uh, also in the South Pacific when they were, you know, testing nuclear devices at Bikini and places like that in the 60s. Uh, the xenon gas was everywhere. So we know that they have it on Mars and we have it here whenever we blow up a nuke. So uh, that's probably what caused the disaster up there. They probably or have it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it could be like here. If they were stupid enough to have nuclear power stations, 
And then I had a very destructive tsunami or something like that come around. That will melt down the power station and the nuclear material would escape. That could also create that xenomon 35. And uh, I, uh, I asked two scientists on that. One said that, yeah, that's possible. But the other one said, no, it had to be a discharge. So I don't know what to believe. I am not that well versed on nuclear science. Well, you know, I, I, I'm not either, but I can tell you, a solar flare could take out, you know, their their power plants. Because, I mean, if they had, I, again, I just look at us, okay? If we had a major solar flare, it took out our grid system. Okay, our our nuclear reactors would last about a week till they run out of diesel. If they even yeah. could, could run, because I don't know how their their generators are protected against the solar flare. But if, if they're not, these reactors will go wild, just like it did in Japan. And then yeah. it's going to, it's nothing we can do there. A time bomb that's going to go off in a matter of hours. So I, I could see maybe that escaping. Or maybe Mars, the, the civilization there at one time, just like us, couldn't handle being a civilization and had a major nuclear war of all wars. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, actually, that there was some type of a conflict where nuclear devices were used. Sometimes I wonder, uh, could we be Martians ourselves, our civilization? Could we be the survivors of Mars? Well, that's what uh, Richard Hoagland thinks. He absolutely thinks we are the Martians. I, so, um, I just think because I, I, you know, like you mentioned like the pyramids and all this stuff. I look at the pyramids here. I mean, I've had guests on my show, honestly, have come up with every idea how the pyramids got built. One was that they created a canal that ran, you know, miles and miles and miles through the sand where they, to the rock quarries where they were cutting these you know, perfectly precise blocks, putting them on a barge and floating them down where they're building the pyramid. Well, first thing in my mind is if you get a bag of of sand and you cut cut it open on the top and you make a canal in it and you pour water in it, the sand sucks it. You're not going to have water. So my first thing in my mind is if I have a a canal that's running, you know, 20 to 100 miles long to where they were getting these huge stones to build the pyramid, how could they fill the water in in, in this canal and keep water in it and, and barge it all? It, that all? And then if they did barge it, how could they have per, constructed these tall pyramids? None of that's... No, we don't know. It, it had to be some type of technology we're unfamiliar with. And that's what tells yeah. me that on 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 the moon or or on Mars, some of these structures, it had to have been technology so superior to what we we came and comprehended. Yeah, I think they used the same technology as they did at uh, Baalbek in uh, Lebanon, where you find seventy ton stones lifted twenty feet straight up and put into a wall. Same thing as you have the stone that is over the king's chamber in the Cheops pyramid is, I believe it is 70 tons. You don't float 70 tons. No. Now, uh, the small stones at the base and around, theoretically possible, I imagine that you could but not the 70 ton. So if there is one stone in there that it is impossible to float, it is also telling me they didn't float the others either. No, that that that, that theory, when I had the guests on, I had them on twice. It, to me, I, after the show, I just started thinking logically. So, you know, I went out to my man cave, and, and we had a bag <laughs> of sand, and I, I cut the top of the bag of sand off, and I made a little canal, and then I started pouring water in it. And now, 